you talk a little bit about what employers expect from statisticians today? We'd like students to understand uh, the industry that we're working in and the business that we're in. Now, the number one, the most important thing, whether you're writing a resume or uh, you know, having an interview, uh, the students that you, uh, you know, work on is to make themselves relevant. Now, this is the most important thing. Um, the, um, uh, no matter how many you know, advanced degrees you have, no matter how many advanced courses you've completed, uh, if, the, you cannot, if they cannot demonstrate that uh, they're relevant to the position that they're applying for, they're relevant to the company that they're applying for, um, then they don't mean anything. Right? So for that, to make uh, uh, you know, themselves relevant, they, need, they really need to learn uh, you know, what the business is about, what the company is looking for. So this is the most important thing <clears throat> from my you know, point of view. And the students should spend more time to understand the industry and the business and the position and then how they can uh, the, uh, you know, plug their solutions, skills and experiences into this particular uh, in the area. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you get a bunch of resumes, mm -hmm. what is it that you are looking for as mm -hmm. an employer? Uh, good question. So, um, the, again, the first, first and most important thing is to be uh, the relevant and then after that, uh, I'm looking for uh, usually unique candidates. Now, being unique is very important, at least in two different ways. One, uh, I see that a lot of resumes are very homogeneous. They look all alike. It doesn't matter if they come from Columbia or other I League schools or top-notch schools. Uh, more or less, they're very similar, right? Uh, and the second thing is, I'm always thinking from a team's perspective. If I want to add the talent, who I want to add the talent, I want a unique skill which can contribute uh, in a value to my team and then my business and can collaborate with existing members. So we don't want to hire uh, someone who already you know, exists uh, in, a, in my team. Uh, we want to hire you know, someone so unique and can collaborate with uh, in the team members. Okay. Uh, do you check students' social media or LinkedIn profiles? We hear all the time that recruiters are looking at LinkedIn profiles. Do you and what do you glean from that? I personally don't. I know a lot of people do, but I personally don't. Okay. So when you're interviewing candidates, uh, what is your way of figuring out who will be a good team member for your team? Right. So there are a few uh, different areas that I'm focusing on. And obviously, uh, junior interviewers are more likely to focus on uh, technical topics. They ask some technical questions, math questions, brain teasers, and programming related questions. Uh, the senior interviewers like me are more focusing on the uh, the motivation behind uh, in applying for you know the position, uh, how mature these candidates are, uh, and then also uh, the if there's any uh, the uh, you know interesting story uh, that you know candidates are able to tell us. Uh, so it's more about the qualitative uh, the aspect of the candidate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What do you look for when you're hiring candidates, when you're looking at resumes and meeting people? What is it that you're looking for? So, good question. <laughs> um, I would say two different things. Uh, one, uh, first and foremost, it's a team fit. Uh, so we would like to bring someone who's um, who's not only just fitting into the culture of our company, but also adding new value. So like we are looking for diversity. Um, so we want to have someone who has um, different point of view that is helpful for our team to be able to move forward. So that's first thing and team person who's more collaborative and team sort of person. Uh, second thing is obviously the technical skill set. Um, being someone who's actually uh, proactive in um, learning about new things and being able to uh, clearly articulate what they are trying to solve, what was the objective, um, what was the things that they have tried, and what are the takeaways. So those are the things, if you can actually explain in a clear manner, um, we think that you're a critical person being able to pick up things fast enough so that you can actually execute things when you are when you're onboarded to the company thank you yes of course yes my name is Edmund Wong I graduated Columbia back in 2009 studying actually the quantitative methods in the social sciences yeah. but I did a lot of statistics courses uh, so I'm right now a director of data science at the Nielsen company and I manage a team of six data scientists and our job is to really focus on data integration and creating 
new data products for our clients. So we would create uh, the insights and analysis, the data pipelines um, for clients such as NBC or ESPN because they care about advertising and they care about how, much p how many people are watching their content. Yes, what I'm looking for is people who have experience using um, the newest like data science tools like Python. Uh, SQL is very, well, it's not really a data science tool, but yeah, SQL is very relevant because we, a lot of data is structured in, a, in, the, in those databases. Uh, experience working with any kind of data set. It could be a small data set, it could be a large data set, as long as they have kind of experience working in uh, manipulating data, like transforming the data set, and they know what they're doing with that data set to create some sort of insight and being able to explain it to uh, another audience. Um, but in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of any kind of data, any kind of data experience would be sufficient to kind of start you off. When you're looking at prospective candidates, what on their resume speaks to you first? Interesting. Um, so that's where it becomes more of a, like, a little bit nuanced when you read resumes, because you know, everybody has different experiences. And again, people could have uh, come straight from, from college into the master's degree and then you know, no prior no professional work experience. And that really, we, we don't hold that against individuals. So we always kind of see what, can, what kind of project work, if they had data project work within the, the master's program. And so yeah, tell me more about that. So we would have to look at that and ask questions again. If it's relevant data experience, even if it's small or, or large data, uh, yeah, if they were able to create insights and you know what they're doing with the actual data and why they're doing it <laughs> and what methodology they use, it's still, I mean, that, that's what we're, we're looking for. And if you do have prof professional experience working at like a, like a larger company at an internship, that's, again, very useful to have. Again, but did you have kind of like a data experience or data challenge within that uh, work? Because that's all very much translated in the real world. When we work for a full time company, full time position at a company, you're going to have data challenges. You're going to have to know what you're doing and 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 realize like no, <laughs> uh, this is the problem that you're trying to solve for.